In 1982, when the BBC's primetime technology show Tomorrow's World did a segment on a new musical format called the Compact Disc, the presenter was cautiously sceptical. Now, whether there's a market for this kind of disc remains to be seen. We all know what happened next, but even in the early 80s, the benefits of CDs should have been clear. The sound is better than anything you'll hear on an average record or tape. Why? Because they replace the needle with a laser. High quality, non-degrading sound in a compact format. Oh, and you could even skip, shuffle and repeat tracks, which in a pre-digital world truly felt like the future. In the long run, it's gonna become a revolution. Just pop it in, play it, sit down, relax, enjoy the music. The compact disc turns 40 this year and there are already signs that the format is set for a mini revival. For the first time in 17 years, sales actually went up and by almost 50%, according to the RIAA's sales database at least. It's still a long way from the format's peak. In 2021, 46.6 million CDs were shipped in the US compared to nearly a billion back in the year 2000. For context, that 46.6 million barely accounts for 4% of last year's total music revenue. Vinyl albums, by contrast, sold fewer overall units, 39.7 million, but are more of a money spinner for artists, making up a total 7% of revenues. CDs first launched in Japan in October 1982, but the format and hardware to play it on didn't land in the US and Europe until the following year. Adoption was relatively swift, and just two years later, the first million-selling CD album, Brothers in Arms by Dire Straits, would cement the shiny disc's popularity. By the early 90s, assisted by increasingly smaller, affordable and even portable players, the CD was the de facto way to listen to music, and for good reason. In this new digital world, the CD format was consistent in a way that analogue never could be. What became known as the Redbook standard, two-channel 16-bit PCM at 44.1 kHz, would be the prevailing specification from there on out. And when someone used to say it's CD quality, one might assume that that's what they are referring to. This standard is considered the minimum requirement to be called lossless by today's streaming services. Um, yeah, CD is just the best thing that's happened to Hi-Fi for years. Of course, how or what you record is really what matters, but that's a whole other story. And despite being more durable than vinyl, CDs definitely can scratch. Now, when a record skips, it's kind of charming. Moment, hint, hint, hint. But when a CD does it, not so much. And worse, if you actually damage your disc, it might work in some CD players, but then not in others, which would often end up with you reseating and constantly cleaning the disc in the vain hope that it might just take this time. Of course, Many CD players only took one disc, which meant a lot of swapping in and out of albums. None of this endless playlist stuff that we enjoy today. And if you knew someone that had all of the CDs in the right cases, it probably meant that they weren't listening to the music nearly enough or nearly enthusiastically enough. Or it's possible that they were organized, but probably not. And that's not to mention the fragility of the cases that these things came in. It was possible somehow to kind of crack these hinges just by looking at them, which often meant that you'd open them and then they would come apart like this. And let alone the little plastic bit right here in the middle. If you found a CD with one of those intact, that was pretty rare. They always seemed to break somehow. Unlike other formats, the CD is unique in that it played a part in its own demise. With the advent of CD burners, you could easily copy your friend's album collection, print out album artwork, and even print circular stickers with the CDR on them. This was how music was stolen for a short period when CD burners and blank discs were affordable and online piracy hadn't yet taken hold. The CD was then effectively relegated to the role of external storage medium before quietly regressing into obscurity. With those small challenges in mind, if you're still willing and ready to give the humble compact disc another spin, well of course first you're going to need some CDs. Maybe you already have some albums at home, and in which case, then you're already good to go. But if you're new around here, then you're definitely going to need to get some albums to get you started. For the current mainstream music, you'll be able to find a selection at Target and Walmart. Jeff Bezos will of course also happily sell you a CD. And Tower Records also recently returned as an online-only store, which also has a good selection of CDs. For more of an indie artist focus, there's of course Bandcamp, or the good old-fashioned merch stall at a gig. 
You can of course also navigate the secondhand market, either locally, thrift stores, local record shops and the like, or online at places like Discogs, eBay, or even apps like Let Go. Perhaps you still have a CD player unironically in your front room right now, or maybe you just have one in storage somewhere. But if you're young enough that you went straight to streaming, it's definitely worth asking an older friend or relative in case they have one somewhere. That said, you might even own a CD player without even realizing it. If you own an Xbox and it has a disk drive on it, then congratulations, you're in the compact disk club. PlayStation owners, on the other hand, you need either a PS1, PS2, or a PS3, because after that, Sony decided that the audio disk side of things just simply wasn't worth it. In the cheap and easy category, you can pick up a USB-C drive for your PC or Mac at a little over the price of one album, and some models will only send you back a reasonable $22. If you want something more standalone and portable, NINM Labs' long time no see portable CD player blends the best of the past with modern conveniences like Bluetooth and USB power. The transparent design gives off early aughts Game Boy vibes, while a clever speaker lid means you're never without a way to listen to those discs. That said, there's of course the aforementioned Bluetooth for connecting to speakers and headphones, and even a good old fashioned headphones port. And what's more, you can run the player directly from USB power or AA batteries. You can even charge the said batteries while it's connected over USB. And the whole thing is magnetic too, so you can get creative with where you place it. Now, of course, the most authentic way to listen to these things is on a hi-fi separate switch. Back in the 90s was the quickest way to let anybody know that you were serious about music. No mega bass, not even an equalizer, just unadulterated pure sound. Cambridge Audio has been around long enough to know exactly what makes a great CD player. Its CXC player comes right in at $700, and you may as well complete the look with Cambridge Audio's CX8061 amplifier, just another $1,000. It's the perfect companion for the CXC, both in terms of looks and connectivity. Of course, spending $1,700 on fancy hi-fi gear doesn't always mean that you're set. You still need some speakers, so you might as well toss in the SX60 bookshelf set for a fully loaded CD setup. And whichever route you choose to go, thankfully there's a CD option for all needs and budgets. And the best part is there's also a wealth of media waiting to be discovered, plenty of which never found its way onto Spotify. And right now, it's going quite cheap. And best of all, it probably sounds just as good as the day it was recorded. Probably. Mm -hmm.